In this video, I show you how you can make a table of contents that dynamically updates itself when users visit each page. Okay, let's get started here. So, uh, I had a question actually from one of my colleagues here, Daniel. Uh, he said if he wanted to create his own table of contents on a page with links to all the pages, um, you know, in the past they've been using the skin, uh, you know, the table of contents skin that's built into Captivate, which is great because of course it tracks which pages are completed and you can uh, use it for navigation as well. He wants to know how this could be accomplished, um, you know, making your own custom page. Uh, or to create an action that changes the state of those button links as pages are viewed and completed. So no problem. I've done some of the preliminary work on this already. Um, I've just sort of built the shell here. So I have a, a you know standard title page, and then I have this table of contents page. And um, this really doesn't actually have to be separate from all the other pages but I did so just for my own ease of use. So I created a bunch of smart shapes that are gonna represent the buttons and the links to all of the different chapters within this course. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on. So I've uh, ticked off under the properties panel to use these as a button, and I could further customize them by changing the, the colors and so forth. Maybe I'll have them just be a white background and uh, maybe we'll get rid of the outline too, just to make it uh, look kind of smooth and clean. And um, of course, one of the things that you have to do for this to work effectively is to have these appear for the rest of the project. So it's kind of becoming part of your template. The other thing I did, and this was done on the master slide, um, is I put this uh, little text box in and it has um, a, a very simple system variable there, CP info current slide label. And what that does is that grabs the content that's in this little field up here in your properties panel for each one of your pages and then pastes it into there. So you can have this right on your master slide and then it just pulls the title off of your properties inspector or properties panel, whatever you want to call it, and places it right there. So all my buttons are here. Now I've gone ahead and created an additional state for each of these buttons. Let me show you what it looks like. I just called it new state one, which is the default there. But what happens is that when you change the state of this object, it's going to change it to a green fill. And you could do some other interesting things too, like you could have it change the font color to white as well. Oh, you got to wait till that's, uh, sorry. You got to do that in the different states here. So like you could have it, I, I won't change it at this point because it'll take too much time, but you could go in and change the font and the background and all these things. So they're all set to go. Uh, these are already set up as links, so if you click on the Actions tab, you can see that Chapter 1 is going to jump to slide 3, which is called Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and so on. We'll all jump to the appropriate slides. So not only are these an indicator of where you are in the course, but they're also hyperlinks to those locations as well. And I have a simple Next button, which pauses the slide after a, a few seconds on each slide. So what I need to do is I need to actually uh, change the state of each of these buttons as you visit each of these particular slides. So here I am on chapter one. On enter, I want to change the state of, and these are all called TOC1, TOC2, TOC3, and so on. So TOC1, we're going to change it to the new state, and yes, we're going to continue playing the project. And we'll do the same thing for uh, TOC2 and so on. So we'll change the state of TOC2 to the new state. Now TOC3, this will only take a moment or two. TOC4. TOC5. 
TLC5. Notice I'm uh, moving on the t on the uh, film strip to each of the different chapters in this uh, uh, particular project. You can really see how naming is important because I'm on chapter six. I want to make sure I'm, I'm making the adjustment to TOC six, and it's really you can imagine how confusing it would be if I uh, was trying to do more than one thing at once and keep track of um, labels and so on here. So I'm on eight, two more to go. Chapter nine, so change state of TOC nine to the new state. And then finally change the state of TOC 10 to the new state. So that's pretty much all you need to do. Uh, again, you just make sure that your your uh, controls themselves are persistent across all of the uh, the different slides where they're going to appear. In this case, rest of project. Um, you know, if I don't need the extra space and I'd prefer to keep it for the the content here, I can reduce the the size of these. So I go to my position panel and I can just uh, do this on the fly here. Yeah, that's good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do a preview and see how this works. So custom table of contents here. We'll go to our first slide. And there we are. We're, we're on the first slide. This is a table of contents. It's getting that title from the properties panel. And let's go ahead and click on chapter one. And you'll notice it's now turned green because I'm not on chapter one. I've, I've looked at this page. Let's uh, use the next button this time. We'll go to chapter two. So again, it changes the visual uh, associated with each chapter as you complete it, giving the user feedback that yes, they've done this stuff. They can move on. They can do this course in any order that they wish. They can jump to chapter nine. They can go to chapter four now jump to chapter three and so on. So you can just keep going through all of these until they're all complete. And then that way the user gets a sense of how far along they are in the course as well. You know, and here I'm, it's very clearly that I'm, uh, you know, 90% through and then the final slide, here I am, chapter 10. Congratulations, I've done everything that I need to do. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful, helpful, or interesting, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.